So here is the pie making assembly. It's an assembly line. You gotta get it set up. Apple pie dough because we're out of it. We're out of apple pies. Okay. So this recipe, I think I've told you the story, didn't I? I told the story on that one time about the recipe about my fried pies and how my uncle brought the Amish ladies fried pies. And then my mom... Well, if I didn't tell it, I'll tell it again. So, when Gary and I acquired the store, the house that was attached to the store was farther gone than what we wanted to invest money in. So, we do these cruisings every year, and we were in the process of tearing down my grandmother's house, and grandparents' house, and my uncle wanted me to carry, or he wanted, yeah, he wanted me to carry, um, can't do two things at one time. He wanted me to carry a uh, sorghum. So anyway, we were right in the process of doing this and he said, I'm going to buy sorghum. I said, I want one case of glass and one case of plastic. And he said, well, I think you need two. And I said, two of each. And I said, well, I think my pocketbook can only buy one of each. He said, well, fine, fine, I'm just gonna buy it. So he came back from the Amish community, which is about 40 minutes from here, and or the Mennonites, and he, uh, brought me <laughs> brought me uh, a fried pie and he threw a fried pie at my son and threw a fried pie at me and he said what do you think about these and I don't like apple fried pies and so my son tried it he said it's good and he said well do you think we could sell them this weekend and I was having my big cruising and my I had about as much on my plate as I could possibly uh, handle and so I said I don't know I said maybe and I said I guess and he said, well, good. I've already ordered 50 of them. You were gonna, got them anyway. So I started driving, well, we got the fried pies and 45 minutes after I had them, they were all gone. So I started driving 40 minutes one way to pick up 15 fried pies from this Amish lady because I didn't know how they would go. And after I had done that for several months, my mom said, I don't want to get kind of in your business, but I have the Church of God um, the recipe, their fried pie recipe, and that was what your great grandmother used to make. So she started helping me make these fried pies, and this is the recipe that I use now. So for a long time, my mom made my fried pies, and I'd go pick them up, and then she had knee surgery. And then a lady that helped me for a while, she loves baking, so she started making them. And then my mom started helping me again. My hair is getting, and um, and so one day after my mom had started helping me again and i was helping more than I was she said tiffany she said i love you she said but i think it's time that you start doing fried pies at the store and so she kicked me out of the nest is what i tell everybody so i make the fried pie dough here at the store and it has to sit overnight and so i've made it in little balls and i'm gonna make apple fried pies which i do buy my um filling from uh the little country store down um in muddy pond and I have all different flavors but today I'm gonna go ahead and just I've got a little bit of dough left from the other day and I thought this would be good for you guys to watch and see me do this so thank you to my uncle Bobby now I make fried pies and to my mom who gave me the recipe who kicked me out of the nest but I know this recipe by heart now and I don't mind giving it out to people because it was given to me and that's kind of always the philosophy my mom had was you know uh she doesn't keep recipes as secrets because she felt like they were all shared with her and so therefore uh, she passes them on so the same with me um so for the longest time my mom and i would just roll out the dough like this and we'd, we'd do it over and the fried pies look kind of uh cattywampus catty cattywampus so the lady who started making for me, Lois, her pies would always turn out perfect. And my mom and I were like, what does she do? So she, when she started her own business and stopped helping me, she shared with me that she took a bowl about this big and she would roll out the dough and then she would um, cut it and that would make them look more prettier. Now, I don't take as much pain as Lois did because um, she she had to have them perfected, but 
If I'm not in a hurry, I don't, I take a little bit more time. But anyway, so what I have learned to do too is if I, which no more fried pies than what I have, I'm gonna start get my oil hot. And, but if I have a big ball of dough, then I'll roll out all my dough and make these round things and I'll just stack them. And then I'll bring them over here and start filling them as opposed to rolling them and trying to watch them. Cause if you're not careful, then you can burn, burn them. But we'll let the oil get hot and I'll roll out a few and we'll pop these out of here. So yeah, so my uncle, and my mom both, but my uncle was, hes he has done some things. We made some walking sticks for a while. I don't have any, I sold out. But they were made out of tobacco sticks that they used in the barn um, when my family raised, uh, raised tobacco. So he's come up with a lot of, uh, in, you know, little creative things for me to do. My mom is the reason I do a Philly steak sandwich. Um, she went somewhere, I don't know, maybe she was at home one night and she got to making a Philly and she said, Tiffany, you should do a Philly steak sandwich. So. Let me get to the process of. Joe, are you all right up there? Okay. You might have told me before, but what's the most you ever made in one, one day? Well, when I do my cruise-ins, I probably make... So, a batch of dough will do... Depending on how thin I make my crust, and like, too, like the consistency of the dough. Like, the dough, this dough is really... It's kind of like Play-Doh. Sometimes I can get the dough too stiff if I put too much flour in it, because I don't really measure it. I just put it till I think... It just kind of depends. But I can get 24, 25 to 30 pies out of a batch of dough. And I have made, I think, at least five batches of doughs before. Maybe more for my cruisings. So I would do nothing but sit here. I'd make the, all the dough, put it in the refrigerator, then the next day. And, I, and a lot of that happens at night. Um, because if I, like, trying to, now today is an okay day. And the girls and I have gotten better about where... They can be, um, you know, helping, or, you know, and I can be making pies where a lot of times in the past I'd have to be on the grill. So it's hard to kind of make pies and then turn around and be cooking too. It's just too much. So to answer your question, if I did five, what's, the, what's that math? Yeah. 125. 125. Yeah. I probably made that many pies before at one time. Like, it's a process, like I said, though, too. Um, and I've done that for my cruisings, because I'll sell out. I'll sell out in my cruisings. So you can see it's starting to get a little bubbly in there. My mother, so she is like a fanatic about, I don't know if the word's fanatic, but anyway. She, um, there's just some things that she won't cut corners on. And one of them is her flour. So you, she uses white lily uh, flour. Yep, that's right there. And um, I have found that to be true because one time I went somewhere and they had some bulk flour and I thought, oh, I'll get this bulk flour and it'll save me. And it, I could tell, and amazingly enough, if you get to working with your dough, then it does make a big difference, so. Okay. We're just going to stick this extra dough in there and we're going to do this. So, I just spread all of these out like this, and since I'm going to do nothing but apple, then. We'll just, and then I just squeeze it out like this whatever I think I don't have any method to the madness so you might come in here one time and get a lot of a lot of filling and then the next time get not as much I just kind of do it but I think the dough is not too 
sweet so I think that makes it really good and uh, they're definitely different than what the um you know that uh, lady was making um, so then this right here the water on it I'm just dabbling that I learned that um, that it helps that stick so in a minute when I use my fork it kind of like pastes it together Sometimes they come apart though. Bye, Joe. Have a good one. Hey, hey, I was supposed to pay Joe's lunch today. Did I buy his lunch today? Yeah, whatever. No. Whatever. We're waiting until he doesn't have any money. Next time he comes in, lunch is on me. Lunch is on me. Did uh, did you interview Joe yet? Have you talked to Joe? I want to come watch football with you tonight. I don't watch football. I mean, I like to watch like high school games, but I don't watch. Did she say ice skating? No. She said I like watch high school games. Yeah. I like hockey. I don't watch sports on TV. I watch football. Yeah. I mean, football's my choice. Bye, Joe. Bye. So we have. We got nine out of that bat, that little, but that's all I'm gonna do today. I just wanted you to see how I make them. And then, I just kinda do it by sap. But, they're edible. They're made with a lot of love and a little prayer, or a lot of prayer and a little love. Or maybe equal amounts. When your mom and dad ran the store, did they cook a full menu like you or did you just do the bloody sandwiches? No, and actually my mom wasn't really, I mean, my mom would come over, but she wasn't here a lot. So I worked for my dad for about, well, my daughter was a, a my daughter was raised in here. Um, at the time, there was a lot of um, oil well stuff going on not that there's not now but the guys would come in here and eat lunch and my daughter would run around here with a little dress on and they put her in lap and feed her raw onions she doesn't remember that um so my daughter was raised in here so that was in 96 and i think i helped him she started going to daycare but i don't know five or six years i worked for him in here um anyway i worked on and off for my mom and dad uh, since I was a teenager, but my mom wasn't here a whole lot. I mean, she'd come over and do some things, but she was, you know, running her bed and breakfast. And then my dad was over here helping my grandmother. So, no, they didn't do a full menu like I No, no fry, you know, no french fries, no potato salad. It was mainly just cold sandwiches. I don't even think they did, they didn't even do hamburgers. They just simply did cold sandwiches. Roast beef, pickle up, pickle up, I don't carry. Roast beef, I don't carry. Turkey, ham, bologna. He might have done a liver loaf. Um, so, yeah. And he didn't have the variety. I think I have a... a I kept his old menu. I'll, I'll show it to you. And you can uh, take a picture of it. So, I don't like to get my pies real done. Like, too crispy. Then they're... I don't think they're... So, I think that's about... All right, I don't know. And this oil, like I said, I'll change it. And then the girls will label it. Joe, the guy that was just in here, he helped build this shelf for me and helped me. He's from Florida. Him and his wife, uh, Miriam, live in White Oak and they go to church with me. And um, he, uh, he helped me put this shelf up and I was, because I was hitting that. And anyway, he's done a lot of things to help me. Um, just get more organized, I guess you could say. So. Seems like a lot of the regular guys that come in always pitch in and find something to do when they're here for you. They do. They do. Uh, I'm blessed with, like I said, a lot of just, like I said, I was, I was watching my video and I was thinking, I mean, a lot of them I know a lot about their families and then. Um, like Drew the other day, you know, I kept saying to Kelly and Drew, gotta have us a baby, gotta have us a baby. Um, so a lot of them just become family and like Miriam and Joe, you know, they eat lunch with me, but I go to church with them and 
And so, yeah, and the guys are really good about, like I said, pitching in and helping if there's something tore up. Um, so where Gary, Gary's out on the, was out on the road a lot and stuff. Or just even helping him, you know, do stuff. Sometimes there's stuff that needs to be done that it takes more than one person, you know. Um, so, yeah. Really good. I'm very humbled and appreciated. Appreciative that I've got such good good neighbors that will help me. Okay. Let's see. Let me put... There. We can't waste that white glue. And then we that okay. uh what else was i going to show you oh i'm going to show you that picture of his menu yeah i think that's about right cover them up with some towels for a minute let them cool off all right come here and i'll show you that i'll show you that menu. it's right here let me shimmy up there. My boot. You can't hardly see it. We need to rewrite it, don't we? Ham was a dollar forty, which you can't really see it. Bologna was a dollar forty. Turkey, um, that looks like a dollar fifty-five. Dollar sixty-five for roast beef. A dollar forty-five for corned beef. Something he had. Then he had the cheeses. Look, he had American cheese for twenty cents. I need to raise mine up then. Whew, I'm not hiding it. I'm still doing the same thing. He did his where extra stuff he put on there. That's a big price increase. But not really. Anyway. I try to keep my prices down where we uh, I just need to. That looks like a dollar fifty. I don't know. That's not gonna ride on there, is it? Oh well. Somebody come in, they were like, we want that price. I was like, yeah, I do too. Uh, I just hate it. That was my dad's handwriting. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of keep that, but that's not what I do. We'll just leave it alone. My dad, he, he was good about coming over here and he made the guys will understand what you did. I tell, did I tell you the other day? Let's see. He worked morning shift. I worked evening shift. Because if you know anything about me, I'm not a morning person. I will be if I have to be, but it's not my preference. But he would uh, he would work morning shift, and we'd work lunch together, and then he would leave in the afternoon and go do things. But he'd say, I'd say, Dad, I think we need to like paint the ceilings. And he'd be like, oh, no. we don't." Have, and then the next day or two or three days later, I'd have... I'd be carrying in these things of paint, and he'd be like, what are you doing? And I said, I said we needed to paint the ceilings. <laughs> and he'd fuss, and I'd just get on the ladder and start doing it, but anyway. <laughs>